Okay, so I uh, was given a suggestion by some of the guys on the forum, if you can see this now. I went in and added uh, some new braces that are quite a bit stronger. Thank you again to, uh, that was Slucky again that gave me the idea. Uh, effectively, I also noted as I did this that to have holes for my mounting, I had to cut a few slots. There's one here. If you can see, there's one that I had to put in right here and another one over here at the back side. But um, basically, I've also drilled my holes for the wires, put one here, one here. And if we flip this around this way, you will see that I have done the same on the other side. I temporarily took off a little hook so this just to make this a little bit easier. But now, um, you know, I've started working on the, the actual board and those are little separate videos I'll show you putting the board together. But I realized I need to really finish this. Uh, I'll be putting a couple of stuff in the back here for the power supply or the power cord and the fuse. Uh, and then I'm also going to need to put on this side, I've got to get and figure out where my, all of my different pots and everything are going to go. So those are going to have to come across here and I will have to be wary of, you know, watching that I don't come too close to where the wires come in here. Although my power switch might be good right about here and, and then the light somewhere in that general area as well. But then I'm going to want to, you know, I'm going to put the inputs somewhere through here. Although I think I might put the inputs on this side. Uh, so they're closer to the to this, and then the output transformer comes down in here, so I don't want things really close to that or that. So, And then I will have some of the uh, the potentiometers across here. It's very possible I might be able to try and just fit them all across this side, so that the output transformer here is where they pretty much stop. But we'll see if I can fit that tightly. If not, I might put a couple of the controls you know, down across, but I'll just give it a little bit of a gap between there. So uh, that's where we're at. I, oh, oh, and I also did do a test fitting uh, inside as well. I put the put the board in just to make sure it looks good because that's one of the things you want to keep doing. And I kept finding little things that I have to fix, like that I noticed that I was missing these, and I had to go back in and drill those in and whatnot. But uh, uh, making good progress. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Uh, I also didn't show most of this fabrication because I didn't get huge feedback on the last video. I think it might have been a little too long into the weeds showing how I did all of it and so maybe it's not quite as interesting to people as I thought it might be so I'm going to focus more on just the board part and electronics and not as much on the chassis fabrication for me it's not the most exciting part anyway so there you have it we'll uh, keep it keep it coming as uh, what seems to be the most interesting to people thanks okay so one of the things I've got to do now is figure out where I want to drill the holes for these guys as you can see the corner ones are pretty much okay they got plenty of room the trickier part, this one's got a nice spot right here for it, but then it's a little too far this side, so you want one to go the other way. If you look at Slucky's, he put it kind of, you can kind of see it down here, uh, but that's by a group of four that are, if you ground those out, it's not good. So, you know, if you are if you see, these are metal screws, and they're going to be kind of, I've got, I'm using the nut because it's bigger, but it's still not a whole lot bigger than this end here. So I need to try and figure out the best spot to do it. I'm kind of leaning towards, since this will be this way a little bit, I might just drop that right here. And I'm going to want to still drill the hole as close to the edge as possible so that I reduce the chance of, of that um, you know, nut touching anywhere close to those bolts. But I'm also trying to decide some of the reason he might have done it that way was there would be a, a spot to drill holes for um, things to come out. And that is the case here, it looks like. So really, if I did that, then I'm, I'm going to be drilling these holes along the bottom for the wires to come out. That also becomes a bit of a problem. So I'm just trying to figure out what would be my best spot... Uh, all in all to put it uh, and it might be I don't know it looks like there's like a that, that series of four and then an opening where it jumps up quite a bit well no maybe actually that one's right here so maybe that is a good spot because what's really going on here is in that area we've got a gap where it goes in quite steep and there'll be a, a cap here there will be a wire coming out here uh, you know down through the bottom but that may still be about the best spot. So I'm going to try and figure that out. But the other ones are pretty obvious where I can put those. So I'll, I'll be definitely marking those and cutting those and trying to decide for sure which one I'll do. But I'll bring that back in a minute. But you know, another one of those things you have to think about. You definitely do not want to ground two of these turrets together on accident unless it's on a grounding bus, which then it would be fine. But in this case, this side is not the grounding bus. The grounding side is all pretty much down through here. Um, as I recall, let me look again. We can click, quickly pull this back up again. Um... Oh no, you know what, actually, oh yeah, that's correct. The grounding bus is atop, I've kind of got this inverted, but, um, so the grounding bus is along this side here, but this is the opposite of what I have here, so. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, we'll try and figure that out, and we'll go from there. Alright, there you have it. We're good to go. Uh, we got the four holes done. If you look, I decided to put this one right here. That's, uh. I think that should work. It's between a spot where it looked pretty pretty well decent. So next thing is I'm going to get the chassis back down here and we're going to look at where I can drill the holes to put this guy and mount it correctly. 
So you'll see that coming up here in a second. All right, now you should be able to see I've got the first screw right there at the bottom left corner. And that will be what I use to now adjust. You can see I've got it a little tilted, but what I'll do is I'm gonna have it straight. So I'll adjust this to where it's perfectly straight and then I'll mark the top, this top right corner up here, which is a little off screen, of course, uh, that top right corner right there. And then I'll put that one in and then I can lock the two together and, and line up each of my holes. And like I said, I just kind of do one hole at a time because I've learned that if you miss one hole, it becomes a nice nightmare of trying to widen that hole until it fits. So this way the, it will fit the whole way. All right, and there you have it. That's two of them in. And now I'll just kind of go one at a time. I'm not going to show you every single one, but you can see I was able to get that one dialed in and that one dialed in. And if I just do them one at a time, I should be good. In theory, I could probably mark the rest of them now that I have two locked in place, but I still like to kind of go one at a time. Uh, you guys can share your comments with me on what you think about that, but uh, that's, that's how we'll go. I'll bring it back to you now when I get done with all of them. All right, there you have it. So uh, I've got the bolts kind of tied in there. Just the whole point was just to show it in, in situ now. So good to go. Um, the next step is going to be I'm going to look at Slucky's layout and drill out all the holes along these sides that will be for the wires to come up underneath. This will be the first time I've done this. Usually I've wrapped my wires just around from the top and then pulled them over the way they went. And I thought, oh, that's good enough. But I kind of came to realize why going underneath is good is it's generally a, a nicer way to do it to look for looks, yes. But... I also realized one of the problems I was having is I would solder in, say, a resistor across a gap, and then I would hook a wire on and re-solder that area, and that would cause that area to flow a lot, and then uh, you know cause liquid to kind of kind of want to come out. So I, I think another one of in, in my mind anyway, good reasons to do this is to you're going to hook up the wire that goes away from it and the connection for whatever resistor or capacitor or whatever is going on in that junction and solder them at once in one fell swoop. So you just dump in that solder right at one shot and you don't have to redo it again unless you're obviously coming back later for some kind of cleanup. Um, the other thing that's nice about that as well is there's one time I had to solder too much and solder had dripped down and was actually making ground with the chassis. And it took me a while to figure that out, but I finally got it out. Now I'll be done soldering all the wires coming away from the board, and I can flip the board and look and make sure there's no solder hanging down, because I'll be able to see it before I insert it. So next steps are going to be to basically do that, drill out all these holes. I'll show you some of that. Then I will be starting to populate the board and the wires and, and solder that all up. And then that'll be ready with just some dangly wires to drop into here. But before I do that, the next step will be to wire up heater wires, run in the power transformers and all the other kind of power and whatnot, because that'll be kind of under this board. And then I can just drop this board on top and connect everything up and we'll be good to go. All right, so what I've done now, if you can see the little white dots on the board, those are corresponding to the spots where I'm going to drill. They may be kind of hard, but you can see one right in front of my finger here. There's just several throughout the different locations. So I'm going to drill well where those are, and that then I will feed the wires up into them. Once I've got all those drilled, then I can start putting components on and start getting things all to go. Uh, so I will uh, get going on that next, and... Uh, I don't think I need to show you drilling. You've seen enough of that already, but I'll get the drilling done and then I'll come back. And I'm going to use a drill bit that's a little smaller uh, because um, these wires are a little bit thinner than the drill that I need to do for these holes. So I'll try and adjust that so that it's just a little bit bigger than the wires and we'll give it a test and look. All right, there you have it. They're all done. Uh, hopefully you can see. I just have a piece of some wire that I have laying around from a previous power transformer and you can see that it goes through nice and evenly so that it can then hook it in and wire it around. So... Uh, I'll try and do some close-up shots of this a little bit later with the macro lens, but effectively one of the things you end up doing is you kind of hook your wire in a nice shape uh, ahead of time, and then you can just kind of drop it in from the top and then hook it around and you're good to go. So it's a tip that I learned from uh, one of the other guys on the forums um, that does his own amp work that are that's pretty impressive stuff I've seen before. So I'm just trying to learn from these guys and figure out the tips. One of the things that was a bit tricky was kind of get these to line up perfectly without a drill press and to not get too close to the edge. You can see a couple of these I got pretty close to the edge, but uh, this is my first time doing it this way and all in all I think it still came out pretty good. So all right, we'll uh, start showing the board components population and the wire hookup and everything on our next series of uh, videos. So that's all I think I'm going to get done for today. We'll get back to it when we start doing the components.